what does a fishing guide do? That's something I've often had to explain over the years to friends and family. And while there are easy one sentence answers to this question, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper to really explain what it is a fishing guide does and what it means to be one. Before making YouTube videos consumed my life, I was a professional fishing guide at various lodges in the north, spending the last three years of my career at Walston Lake Lodge in Northern Saskatchewan. This is where we're headed back to, not only to do some fishing of my own as a guest this time, but to help tell the story of what it is to be a fishing guide. What does a fishing guy do? In a nutshell, you're, you're trying to take people to an area to find fish, but it means so much more than that. Guide is more than just fishing. You're more than just a boat driver. A couple hats, but I would say the biggest thing a fishing guy does, like you're a teacher. My name's Clayton Schick. I've been guiding at Wallison Lake Lodge since 2004. It's for 20 years almost now. I remember first walking into camp and at that point I had gotten here after all the other staff had the lodge set up for the most part, all the boats are in the water, all the signs are up, the lodge is looking unbelievable. And I just looked around and I'm like, how does a place like this exist out in the middle of nowhere? And I remember one of the first things I said to Mike, I don't, didn't know him from a hole in the ground. And I said to him, I was like, I'm gonna be here for a long time. And I remember his exact words to me. He looked at me, he goes, we'll see. <laughs> It's just my first experience here, like my first thoughts was incredible, just seeing all the equipment, all the boats, all the staff, the buildings, everything just seems so fresh. How old were you when you started guiding? I think I was probably, I think it was 15. I remember my parents dropping me off at the first lodge I guided at. I didn't even have my drivers at the time. And I was like, what did I sign up for? Just gone all summer. I was 18 or 19, I think 19 when I started guiding at Walston and I was like, whoa, this is the big leagues. My name is Paul Brace. I'm 19 years old. I have been guiding here for one year and working at Wallston has been a dream of mine since I got into fishing and like kind of when I started to get into the whole like, you know, following Clayton and Jay and all these guys, you start to hear about all these different outfits. I heard about this particular job from Clayton Fishing is just such a big part of my life. And to be able to come up here and do it for a living and, you know, take people fishing and seeing these people, some of these people I've guided this year have never caught a big fish before. And like, just seeing the expression on their face and how excited they are over any fish, it doesn't have to be a big fish. It's just incredible. And I think it's just like taking my passion for fishing, which is already crazy, just to a whole nother level. I would troll that like that flat there. Okay. Like I would kind of like, kind of like where you jig. And then keep working our way up. I would just like, I would just follow that, that ridge right there. Oh, instant fish. Yep. Hooked up with the Laker. It is not big. This is full service. Just a little one? They have big, beautiful fins in this lake. <laughs> Did the 360 barrel roll. Attaboy. First fish. There you go. There's a fish. I don't think it's huge, but 25, 24. We'll see some color soon. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Good job, buddy. Atta boy. Nice. Sweet. Well, that was a good way to end the day. Yeah, man. That was fun action. I feel like a day in a fishing guide's life. You wake up, check the weather, figure out your plan, talk to your guests. What do they want out of this trip? Are they trophy hunters? Do they want action? Do they want to do the Grand Slam? Can they take a boat ride? Go to your destination board, 
figure out where you want to head out on the lake that's going to best suit your guest experience. Hop in the boat, make sure they got everything for lunch. Do they want anything special? Do they have any dietary issues you got to cook around? And then if you're with multiple guys, coordinate with them, make sure everyone's going to the same spot, plan your day and hop in the boat and get her started at nine. Weeds are about 20 yards offshore right there. Let's go get number two. You get the question asked lots, like what what does a fishing guide do? Or I'll give you an example. Some people say like, oh, you got to fish all summer long. And until you actually live in the boat for the whole summer or spend a day in our shoes, you won't really fully understand what guiding means. It's just being on the water day in and day out, spending time with the clients, but teaching people, not just necessarily about fishing, but about life in general. When I think back through my time guiding at Walston, it was definitely a reciprocal relationship between the guests and us guides. Yes, I'm sure I taught some guests fishing skills along the way, but I cannot tell you the amount of business and life advice I gained from the people in my boat. To this day, I still stay in touch with these friends and mentors I made over 10 years ago. Being a guide makes you a much better angler, even though you're not holding the rod yourself. The thing is, you're fishing 90 days straight. You're fishing in any weather because, you know, if I'm fishing back home and it's a bad weather day, I might just not go out. But now you're forced to go out every day so you learn how the fish react. And also you learn the, the movement of the fish because you're following them every day. It's not like you go out and then you come back three weeks later and you're trying to find the fish. It's like, you can literally follow these fish from the back of the bays to the transition out to the weed beds, to the rocks, whatever it might be. So I think you learn to fish in all situations. Also, a lot of us maybe don't have a big boat like this or the resources, the gas money to go fishing every single day. You're not paying for the gas. You're, you're burning Wollaston's gas and you get to go over this massive lake. Yeah, I don't think there's a better way to learn. I think the biggest thing that keeps me wanting to come back to Wollaston year after year is the size of the lake. It's so hard, I think, on a smaller body of water for 20 years, I think I would get bored. But this lake being so huge, 110 miles from river system to river system, 40 miles wide, as a guide, it's just like an endless playground where you can be out there and see different water every single day almost. There's spots I haven't been back to for 10 years. I think the biggest thing with sharing what the guest is going through is understanding for most of them this is so far from what they experience on the daily. Like you get 18 trips a year, they get one. So when they come, they're so excited, whether it's June, July, or August, whether it's group one or group 18, their excitement does not change. When you're in the boat with them, you know, whether it's seeing the first big pike, whether it's seeing the first lunch fish pike, whether it's seeing their first Arctic grayling in the water, like their excitement. So you're gonna go through the highs of landing them and high-fiving and hugging it out in the boat, but at the same time, you're good, they're gonna come unbuttoned beside the boat or something's gonna happen and, and you just gotta laugh it off, you know, like on to the next one, like you never let it keep you down too long. I think a good guide knows how to find fish and how to catch fish. I think a great guide listens to their clients and keys in on what their client needs. We all think that everybody needs big fish all the time, but a lot of the time they need 40 little guys or they need some action here. They might need one nice one here. They might just need to catch one on a fly rod. Maybe they need to catch one on top water. Reading your client and figuring out what they actually need and what's gonna be fun for them, I think that's what makes a great guide. I think a great guide is a guy that like, he lives to go that next step. The good guide will be okay with being good. He knows he's good. The great guy just never stops. Like he's hungry, he wants more. It's just a lot of attention to details. Taking note of when that water temperature goes up a tenth of a degree or just the way a specific lure is working and why that's triggering the fish or you know you'll have a guide and they'll be they'll be watching their guests rods and one guy will be catching all the fish and he'll be like well it's because that that guy in the front of the boat was reeling a little faster than the guest behind them in the boat right and it's it's those little things i think a great guide is always paying attention and always looking to get a little better not just settling and being complacent 
I think my goal is to kind of be a better version of myself every single day. Even if I'm happy with the way things are going, I still want to be wake up and be just a little bit better the next day. Because there's always stuff that a person and a, a guide in this uh, in this case can improve on. The, the possibilities are kind of endless for improving. This is a place that I want to be long term and I just you know want to keep moving forward and keep building a better version of myself. Walson's where you want to be. 25 other guides. It was intimidating for sure. There's always, if you put the time in like after hours a little bit and like go and talk to some of these guys, they're all more than willing oh, to help yeah. you out. If Please. you're in there, Paul, and you're catching 10 inches, that means they're all in there. Don't leave. Actually? Yes. I think the tougher parts of being a guide is one, it is hard work. Um, you're out there guiding about 90 days in a row. So you gotta have the stamina to do that. You know, being away from family, being away from friends, those things, that makes it difficult. You know, you miss out on a lot of things and there's some sacrifices you have to make to be a guide for sure. One of the hardest things about what we do for so long is being away from family. It's 90 days up here where yes, everybody that's up here is good friends and good family, but a lot of us have loved ones back home that we leave for the whole summer. You're away from home, you're in a remote you know, area, you, are, you don't have access to things that you're used to having access. We work every day for the entire season. There's no days off. Physically, you have to be prepared and come with confidence and experience. Those are the keys. And being humble in order to keep learning just keep asking your, asking questions. The passion will drive you to succeed. The experience will finally take over to the point where you will, so. You know, here they have a guide school, which was super helpful just to get your feet wet, but it's still a lot. And for a young guy, it's intimidating. I think that's like anything in life is like, you gotta be a little bit nervous. That's where all the good things come from. You gotta push through that nervousness and it's overcoming this lake, overcoming, you know, the procedures of how things work. I think, well this is, I know this is for sure, this is the year I started. Every year they've got a different hat, so when you look at the pictures you can tell what's what. And that's the year I started. I think I still guided in 14. It's a cool way. Everyone gets a hat that comes and when you look at the picture you can tell that's the year I was there. It's important to know you're not fishing yourself, but you're around fish, you're watching fish eat lures, you're helping with the sight fishing, and then obviously you still get a fish. Like in the evenings, that was some of my best memories was you know, going out with the other guides in the evenings. And it's funny because you go fish all day. You think, why would you want to fish anymore? And then you go out until dark. Had some pretty cool memories just in the couple hours I'd have in the evening going out with staff. Giant. Oh, 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 just a shark. That is what it's all about. Alrighty. Wilson Lake Lodge. 46 by 30 and a half, my biggest laker ever. Woo! So slimed, but so good. Oh my goodness. When I see Paul, it's just a flashback to me when I guided in Fisherman when they came to Wallston. And that was such a cool experience and opportunity that Mike and Rocky gave me. And now it's just like, I'm on the other side of it. Here we go. You want me to stop now? Oh yeah, yeah you can get neutral. How big? Oh, I don't know, luncher. Got him. Got him? Nice. Oh, that's a decent one. Dude, that's not a bad fish at all. That's a good one. And a boy. 30 incher? Yeah, 30, 31 kind of thing. On the board. Atta boy. I can tell Paul might be like a little bit nervous just with the cameras and everything going on. <laughs> That's not the right one. Sorry, this will just take one minute here. <laughs> not that one. Oh. You can tell that he's got the passion and he's got an amazing skill set. And I, I'd love to come back in 10 years and see 
where he's at. Paul was one of the guides that I got to put through guide school and in the last 60 days now that I've been with him I've watched him grow and grow and grow and grow and he's gone from a, a nervous 19 year old to an excited 19 year old now. Am I doing more than most uh, guests normally do? Oh yeah. They don't normally prep your meal? No this is nice. The rookie always makes the fire though that's the rule. I love building the fire. Every moment you can tell he's soaking it in. He wants to be here, he cares, and it's an enjoyable process because I look I look at him and I see like me 20 years ago. Like, like that's literally me. The, the biggest difference is Paul doesn't have the ego and the attitude that I might've had and thought I knew everything. Paul's got a lot of good things going for him in the sense where he knows that he needs to learn and wants to learn and doesn't think he knows it all already. A dream come true to be guiding at a place like this. I feel like when you're young, it's just such a opportunity to be able to do this for a long, like longer period of time. I'd love to be here as long as I can ride it out. We had a flyout scheduled day four, one of our big, big pike flyouts. So I was excited about that. Uh, woke up in the morning, went down for coffee and I see Clayton and he told me the, the good news that he's going to be in the boat as well. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty cool having both the fellas in, in the boat and I was excited and you know, he had a little bit of nerves going on. And Today was really exciting for me to be able to spend time with Paul and Jay in the boat because I'm never on that side of it. Getting to see Paul's excitement throughout the day, his willingness to learn. I've been fishing these waters for 20 years and that's Paul's like third day ever in that whole area. And he took full advantage of it by asking me questions about areas, about different spots on the spots. He just picked my brain the whole day and that's what I really wanted. It was not just to be there to, to hopefully catch some fish. I wanted to pass that knowledge on to him about different spots, about weed beds, about rocks, about drop-offs, about the edges. Everything that I've learned over the last 20 years, it's so cool to pass it on to somebody who could be here in 20 years from now. Oh, that was so cool. Ooh, that was decent. Oh my! I think guiding is definitely a good step for anybody that wants to do anything in the fishing industry, whether that be making YouTube fishing videos or marketing or developing product, anything fishing really, even fishing tournaments. I just think that it, it gives you such a skill set for working with people, for becoming a better fisherman, fishing every day. All, all those angles, boat control, when you drive a boat every day, you get pretty dang good at driving a tiller, right? So I think all those things, if, if you want to make a living in the fishing industry, and maybe it is guiding, maybe you want to guide for the next 40 years, and that's awesome, you can, you can do that too. For myself, I don't think I'd be where I'm at today if it wasn't for guiding. People are like, well, how long have you been running your YouTube channel? I'm like, well, like four years, but that's not really where I feel like it all started. I feel like it started when I started guiding. He's behind me, he's behind me, he's behind me. It's big. Oh, it's big. Oh my gosh! Did you see that? That was the craziest strike I've ever seen. And it's big. Oh my gosh. It's big. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I am shaking. Like, I am shaking. That is big, Jay. It's by far one of the coolest eats I've witnessed, and I've been doing this for 20 years. I, that will live in my head forever. That is one of the and coolest fish strikes Paul, I've ever had. What happened? You saw a little dimple and you, you said, you know what? Cast. And look what happened. Oh. 
And then getting to see Paul's excitement landing the fish. I've never been so nervous for somebody landing a fish before because I know that pressure. And it was just an epic moment that I'll never forget. Oh, dude, I'm nervous. It's a horse. It is a horse. That is a big, <laughs> a big Walston Pike. Spin it slow. Just if it, if, it, if it lets, if it freaks at all, just go, let it go. Yeah, don't commit until it's like right there. I'm not gonna put too much on her here. She might want to kick. You got her. You got her? You got her, yeah. Get her in. Get her in. Oh my god, dude! That's a four-footer, dude! Oh! That's a four-footer! Oh man! <laughs> oh I'm shaking, goodness, dude. Woo! <laughs> I'm shaking. Dude. It was definitely a, a tense moment, but we got her in the boat. Uh, gave her a bear hug and I've never been so fired up <laughs> Out of boy Jay got uh, a couple great pictures that are gonna be in my camera roll for the rest of my life and uh, Sent her back and she kicked off strong and oh boys nice. boys Paul, Paul, oh, nice man. Oh, Are you relieved? Yes, oh real. man oh. It was so cool. It was like I said one of the most memorable fishing moments in my life A guy who's on his deathbed and his buddies coming to see him and they're all their fishing buddies they've gone all over and done things and shared experiences and this one of your best friends is at the end of his time and what do they sit around and talk about is the times that they spent together fishing and the guides they had and the fish they caught and they, the whole experience and I think that as a new guide you can't really truly understand that and until you have some experience, you become friends with these, these people, and you go to their homes and your, your face is on the wall holding fish, and you're, you're giving them experiences that they have for the rest of their lives. So a fishing guide means way more to me than just somebody who drives a boat and says fish here. But it's an evolution, it takes time. So that's what a fishing guide does.